What's up YouTube? Welcome back. More 500 Bushwhacker testing today. Today we're going to be comparing it to the Smith & Wesson 500 Magnum. Now the 500 Magnum shoots 500 Magnum cartridges and that's where it tops out. This is where it actually tops out at the 700 grain level. That's an underwood, what we call underwood lipstick, 700 grain hard cast. And that's where you top out. That's where the cylinder fills up on the 500 Magnum. The Magnum Research BFR chambered in 500 Bushwhacker can take a very long cartridge compared to the 500 Magnum and still pack a 620 grain pill at this point. So side by side, the maximum and the maximum, you don't have to go all the way to the top on either one of them. This is a moderate load. This is a 500 grain round from Hornady for the 500 Magnum. This is a 400 grain solid copper round for the 500 Bushwhacker. We're gonna be experimenting with various loads, but comparable loads with both of these revolvers because we wanna get an idea of the difference of recoil between the two of them with comparable loads. We're gonna to try to send them through the chronograph. This chronograph right here in this sunlight is probably not gonna work for most of these shots. Maybe we'll get lucky, maybe we won't. That's not super important to me. What I wanna show you today is the recoil difference and the shootability of either one of these with the various loadings. I'm going to be aiming at a target, but it's going to be pretty irrelevant. It's just giving me a point of reference to aim at through that chronograph. All right, we're going to start this test just warming up with a very unique round. It's called the 500 Special. Some of you know what it is, some of you don't. It's actually 500 Special. It's not shortened Magnum Brass. It's its own special case made by Starline, and you basically make what I call a 50 caliber cowboy load out of this thing. This is traveling at about 1,000 feet per second. It's a 325 grain load. It's going to feel like a 38 Special out of this gun but I want to see the recoil out of this gun compared to the Bushwhacker. So we're going to have camera guy get an angle on it. He's going to see exactly what I do with this gun, and then I'm going to switch to the other gun, and we're going to repeat exactly as much as I can without moving around too much. So I'm going to use single action so that I take all the play out of the gun and all that stuff. I just want you to see recoil, none of my finger moving through the trigger or anything like that. Nine fifty three. Camera's guy is gonna stay right there. Same exact round. Five hundred bushwhacker. Nine twenty nine. And when I let the recoil go off, I'm letting the gun settle where it naturally goes up. I'm not trying to bring it back down. A little bit of gravity might bring it back down, but. You should have been able to see a minute difference. I felt a minute difference. There was a velocity difference, and there was a point of aim, point of impact difference. The next round we're gonna be going for is the Hornady FTX 300 grain. These are the little mini missiles. So these feel pretty stout out of this gun. They don't feel too bad out of that gun. These are not my hand loads. These are actual factory loads. So camera guy is going to go ahead and do these ones. We're going to see how he shoots this thing. All right, here's camera guy with the FTX. <laughs> Took him off his feet a bit. It's this brake that makes the difference. This TI Heavy Pro brake. <laughs> Looks like that was handled a lot better. So camera guy's not a big talker. I'll go ahead and do the talking for him. But that muscle brake tamed that round down very well. That was the exact same round. There's a little bit of a difference in length of barrel, of course, but the brake is on there. There's a little bit of a difference of weight of gun, but again, that brake is on there. So the next comparison we have for you, we're going to shoot that same 300 grain FTX out of this 500 Magnum again, but this time we're going to compare it to the 310 grain bullet out of the Bushwhacker. So this is going to show you a little bit of how this muzzle brake engages the lighter, faster bullets compared to something like the compensator that's on this 500 Magnum. I forgot to mention we had an error on the first shot, but on the second shot camera guide took, we had 2,009 feet per second. 300 grain FTX, 500 Magnum. All right, that's where I ended up. Let me grab the Bushwhacker with the 310 grain Bushwhacker cartridge. 310 grain Bushwhacker. By the way, the last velocity was 1919. The 
velocity was 2329 and you saw where I ended up not bad I rose a little bit I don't know how comparable it is till I actually watch a video but doesn't feel that bad a lot of increase in power though now we're going to move up in cartridge weights the closest comparison I can get right now is a 500 grain Hornady XTP and we're going to compare that to the 520 grain Bushwhacker All right, 500 grain XTP, 500 Magnum, Smith & Wesson. Twelve sixty six. With the increased weight of the projectile, of course, the lower velocity, because it's got to try to push that thing through like oomph. 520 grain Bushwhacker. Now that's 1266 in the last one. Let's see where we end up with this. It's only 20 grains heavier. Eighteen seventy four significant rise this is where it's showing the heavier lead bullets they're powerful and they're fun but they don't work as good on the muzzle brake as the lighter stuff and it starts to get a little bit brutal but that's what we like sometimes heavy big booms that you don't get to do very often all right this is going to be an interesting comparison we had to break out the lipsticks for this one so the underwood 700 grain lipsticks we're going to be comparing that to the 310 grain bushwhacker what we're going to do here is we're going to go a little bit in reverse we're going to start with the bushwhacker a 700 grain lipstick we're going to go to the smith and wesson 500 magnum a 700 grain lipstick and we're going to see how those two very different guns handle that very same cartridge but i want to keep that 500 magnum 700 grain cartridge fresh in your head from that shot because we're going to go back to the 500 bushwhacker with a 310 grain very drastic different spread right there you have 700 grains versus 310 grains it's going to act very differently out of these two guns this has a muzzle brake on it and this one has porting in the barrel i think we're going to be pretty impressed by the difference in recoil especially realizing that the 310 grain bullet is no joke not that the 700 grain bullet's a joke either but you're going to see all right 700 grain smith and wesson 500 magnum round out of the bushwhacker Eleven fifty-two, and those ones always smell really funny. All right, same round out of the five hundred Smith and Wesson Magnum. Ten eighty-seven, and that one always stings. That one always jumps out of my hand a little bit. All right, back to the five hundred Bushwhacker cartridge, three hundred and ten grain out of the Bushwhacker. Twenty-two forty-six. much more pleasant to shoot it's not that it means anything but just to show you that's the accumulative group between the two guns again no data behind it but that's what it was hope you like this kind of testing hope you're enjoying the bushwhacker testing check out our playlist we got a lot of videos a lot of information hope it all helps you out hope you like this video and until we see you next time stay safe have fun and keep shooting